Okay, so first we'll start with an example that has no coupling still, the thing we haven't even defined so far, but this one, no coupling. This is from STBS again, and I did add the uh, TMS signal. I doctored it, so you could tell it's a little bit off right there. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so this was done on a 300 megahertz NMR, so stronger than our NMR. If you remember, I said our NMR is just a 60 megahertz. And here's the molecule. It's a chloromethyl methyl ether. Remember, an ether is a functional group. It's an oxygen with a carbon on ether side of it. And this one is a common reagent used in organic chemistry. <clears throat> it's used to make methyl oxymethyl ethers. Um, they're called, they, these are actually what are called protecting groups. They protect a molecule, one part of a molecule, so you can react another part. We'll talk more about those later. And when they're on a molecule to protect it, that molecule then is called a mom ether for methyl, methoxymethyl ether. And since it's a mom ether, people refer to it as mom chloride. It makes mom ethers. This can make a mom ether, so we call it a mom chloride, so to honor moms everywhere. It's a funny acronym. All right, so let's label the uh, hydrogen NMR spectrum like we did before. I always want us to label hydrogen NMR with letters A, B, C, and I want it to be from left to right like you read. So A, B, and then at zero, that's of course TMS, tetramethylsilane. Our internal standard we use to set our spectrum to zero parts per million. Now this spectrum, is, this peak here is say three and a half parts per million, million relative to TMS. All right, so here's our first grouping here. We got a, another group here, and this is the uh, the signal A. It's a shorter signal, and it so it sh looks like it has less area to it. So we're going to assign that one to the two hydrogen signal. So A is that two hydrogen singlet. Remember, a. Shorter signal, less hydrogen makes sense right to me. Hopefully that makes sense to you, and we'll talk more about the uh, area of signals and the number of hydrogens that make those signals. But hopefully it makes sense to you that the two hydrogen signal is got less area than the B, the three hydrogen signal. Okay, and now a singlet again. We're gonna ask this for a singlet, and we'll talk more about this later. And actually, it's the next example. This is the last one we're doing that doesn't have couplings. And then, so you're doing great. You've come so far already, you're making mom happy. Okay, so B is that signal. It's a three hydrogen signal, singlet. And again, a taller signal, more hydrogens, three hydrogens makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you. This molecule made all single singlet signals had no coupling. I still haven't told you what coupling is, but we'll get there. But this, this one doesn't have coupling. Okay, now this is a, a proton NMR, H1 NMR of ethyl bromide from SDBS as well. It's a, and this one was done on a 90 megahertz NMR, so about the same strength as ours. You can see uh, what we call the baseline here. It's not as flat and smooth. It's a little bit rough. That's because it's not as strong of an NMR. If this was a 300 megahertz NMR, this would be smoother. Actually, we'll go back. To, I know it's a different molecule, but see how flat the baseline is in this? It's a stronger NMR, 300 megahertz. Okay, and so here's ethyl bromide. So this spectrum has coupling. Finally, but wait, what's coupling? I'm just saying that word a lot, but I haven't defined it. Before I answer, let's look, take a closer look at this one. <clears throat> so we're gonna label it as we did before, A, B, C, D, left to right. So this is signal A, and now you might've thought, wait a minute, is all of this A, or is it like A, B, C, D? Turns out this group of four peaks is A. We'll, we'll go into more about that. And then this group of three is B, and then finally TMS. Here's your tetramethylsilane. So besides the internal standard here, TMS, that we use to set the spectrum 
reference. Uh, this spectrum, and the, uh, besides the TMS, which has, is a singlet, these guys are not singlets. Uh, signal A is split into four parts. Kind of weird, right? Before this spectra, we only saw singlets like this. Now we've got this four. We call this guy a quartet. Let's zoom in on it. So I just took this and I zoomed in on it. See how it's one, two, three, four? And it's like a shorter, taller, taller, shorter. So, uh, yeah, we say s signal A, which is split into four parts, is, is referred to as a quartet. <clears throat> it's not a singlet, which is not split. Is only one part, so TMS is a singlet, right? It's only one boob, just a single peak up. This is a four, so quartet. And we say the signal A is split into a quartet by coupling. So I'm using the word coupling again, still haven't defined it, but coupling is what we say, split this into a quartet. All right, so, but we're getting there. Hold your horses if you're wondering what's with this coupling. So signal B is split into three parts. It's called a triplet. Makes sense, right? So let's click to zoom in on B. Boom. So you can see it's got a short, tall, short. Both of them, you notice the pattern, they kind of are taller in the middle. Taller in the middle. We'll discuss that later. And uh, it's a triplet. So let's label the structure now. We've got a group of hydrogens here that are equivalent, those three, and another group of two hydrogens there that are equivalent. Signal A is shorter. This one's shorter than B. It looks to have less area. If you did some calculus and you integrated the area under the curve, it looks like A has less area, and it does. Let's uh, set that as the signal, the two hydrogen signal, not the three. So we're going to call this signal A, two hydrogen quartet, because the three is more hydrogens, two is less hydrogens. Q for, we'll use the Q for to abbreviate quartet. So we'll talk more about the area of the signals later, but I hope it's intuitive at this point. It makes sense that like only two hydrogens, shorter signal, three hydrogens, more hydrogens, taller signal. And now signal B is taller and appears to have more area. Let's assign that as it's three hydrogens. So there we go. So we're saying signal B, the signal with more area, is a three hydrogen triplet. We use T to represent triplet. So you think I'd tell you what coupling is now? Not. Not yet. We'll get there. We're going to go back to the Google Doc spectroscopy introduction and uh, we'll get our nerd on. We'll do a little thought experiment and try to imagine that we're the first nerds to be figuring out how NMR works and trying to interpret this spectra as if we took it in our garage lab and we were trying to figure out why did that get split into a quartet, why did that get split into a triplet, and try to come up with ideas for it. Okay, so go back to the Google Doc now. <clears throat> 